Hey YouTube, it's Austin from ContrarianComputing.net. I don't typically do videos like this, but I thought today was a special occasion. I was at the Recyclers, and I sort of have a reputation there as the weird guy who looks for late 90s and early aughts computer components. And when I was there, they said, oh, you're that guy. You know, we found something interesting, and it was still in the shrink wrap. We put it up on the shelf in the office. Do you want to check it out? And I said, eh, sure. So I went upstairs, and I looked. And on the shelf, there was a GeForce FX 5500 AGP, still in its original wrap. And I said, well, that's interesting. How much would you like for it? And they said, $10. So I bought it for $10. And now we can unbox this interesting little uh, nugget of early aughts uh, computing history and see if it works and maybe talk about the significance of the GeForce FX series and why everybody hates it so much. So here we have it, the EVGA eGeForce FX 5500. Now as I said, the 5500 was not the fastest FX card, nor was it the slowest. The FX 5500 is basically a 5200 that they guarantee has a 128-bit memory interface, unlike the um, really uh, compromised 5200s that were available with 64-bit memory interface. And if you listen to other videos about the FX series, um, you'll find out how much that hobbled it. Um, but the 5500 has slightly faster clocks in addition to that 128-bit memory interface. Um, and we look at a very happy-looking card here, which is designed for Microsoft Windows XP. Uh, and this is this is just hilarious to me right here. Down in this corner, it says, win this card, which is a little odd. That's kind of a weird contest. So you have to buy it to enter it, and then you already own the card that you're winning. So what does that really mean? You get a full refund, and that's basically what pretty much every owner of an FX card really wanted was a full refund. So thank you, EVGA, for having that in mind. Now, if we flip over to the back here, we can see this uh, interesting comparison. Uh, and it talks about some of the specifications here. And as we see, they are claiming that the uh, 5500 does meet the full Microsoft DirectX 9 shader model 2 um, specification, which it does sometimes, depending on which driver you have installed. Uh, and if you have the Windows hardware drivers, we'll talk about later, the, the QA driver, then you might not get actual real shader model 2 support, which is which is funny. Um, uh, it, it is an AGP card, though. I can tell that from the king. Another interesting thing. I love this over here. As you see, we have we have two um, uh, barcodes on it, so that you can basically compare the serial numbers. I, I suppose this was so somebody couldn't take a, a higher spec card, or maybe even an ATI Radeon uh, 9800 Pro, and uh, jam it into this box, and then attempt to buy it at the FX 5500 price. Uh, as you can see, we do have matching serial numbers here, so this has not been tampered with. Um, as the sticker says, there is a whopping 256 megabytes of memory installed on this, uh, like a lot of late, low-end cards. Um, the board partners really like to slap a lot of memory on there so they can try to get a higher price when uh, it's probably not going to do you too much good. Um, but yeah, um, why don't we tear this open and see what is inside. The uh, plastic is incredibly brittle. I think it's been sitting on a warm store shelf <clears throat> for many years. See, we have the factory seal here. Let's see if I can get around that. Come on. Oh, it tore. Oh, it tore. It's tearing. Lots of tearing happening. Oh, no. Oh, I tore the box. Oh, I don't send this to the VGA. We're not going to get 100 on this. Please note, if this product is not working properly, do not return to store. What if it's rendering in 16-bit uh, precision and, and not the 24-bit uh, mandated by the spec? That's going to be problematic. I guess I won't return it in that case. Okay, well, already we found something interesting. It's a bit loose here. This is a uh, DVI to uh, VGA adapter, which you don't really need because it has a VGA port. So you only need this if you want to do dual head VGA, I suppose. Uh, there it is. 
and all of its upside down glory. Oh, I seem to have opened it completely backwards. Uh, let's do the fun stuff. What is this thing? Oh, it's an S-Video cable, yes. I don't know about you, but I really liked recording gameplay footage on VHS um, right out of the back of my, my car. That was a fun thing to do back in the day, obviously, before streaming was a thing. Uh, that would help you do that. And we have a manual. Ooh, case stickers. Oh, that's going to be good. I want everyone to know that I have an FX5500. Uh, display driver installation CD. Uh, 98 ME NT4 2000 XP. Wow, so many options. Oh, are these the are these the stickers? Oh, they don't they don't tell you that I have a GeForce FX card, just that I have an EVGA card. Well, okay, well that's something. Um, the user's guide. Yes, yes. How do I use this? Does it say something about uh, remembering to install special patches uh, to optimize for the FX card if you have some sort of DirectX 9 game? No. Uh, how much? Oh, I could send in. I could send in the registration card. Is there a registration card here? No. Oh no, look, it's Dawn. Oh, oh gosh, that is that is so tawdry. Okay, well, we don't need that anymore. Oh, I can see what the better better versions of my card look like. Oh, there's a 6800 Ultra right there. I'll take that one. Okay, can I, what kind of trade-in do I get on this now that I've opened it? Oh. Okay, anyway, on to the main event. Which is upside down and also completely popped out of its little holder here. Uh, let's see what we can do. Oh, oh, it's stuck. Okay, okay, okay. I'll leave this to one side. That uh, well, we have an active cooling solution. Oh wow, 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 wow! Look at that. Yes, yeah, so this is from the Capacitor Plague era, uh, and as you can tell, this is a completely unused card. And these capacitors have completely burst, pretty much all of them, so I don't think I'm going to be testing this card immediately. Um, uh, and this can happen. Um, you do not actually have to use a uh, defective capacitor in order for it to burst like this. Um, if they... It, the the story here is that um, somebody said that they had stolen Rubicon's uh, capacitor electrolyte um, formula and then went to China and uh, sold it uh, there. Uh, but he didn't actually have the uh, correct formula for the electrolyte, and it was missing some important chemicals to stabilize the capacitor. And as a result, the electrolyte uh, kind of attacks the metal um, within the the can. Um, and it creates uh, hydrogen gas, and that hydrogen gas builds pressure in the can until it bursts. Now this orangey stuff you see here actually is not the electrolyte in, in most cases. Um, normally that's the sealant, which is used to hold in the electrolyte, but that's the first thing to come out. Um, the pads still look fairly glossy, so it seems to have come out the top uh, in a way that did not cause significant damage to the traces so this is going to be repairable but this is the thing to keep in mind uh, and why it's kind of hard to keep things from this era running is that there were a lot of bad components in the stream back then um, we have quite a bit of this Infineon memory uh, and I'm not sure if that is a nanosecond rating or something there but it does not seem to be incredibly fast and if we look back here, we can see shell number again, and the back of the board looking fairly clean. All right, well, I am going to need to recap this, and maybe I'll even record that, uh, and then after that we can pop this into, I was thinking, uh, 845 or 865 uh, Intel board with Pentium 4 and try to run some games of the era and see how it compares to its friend, the 9600 Pro. See you then.